and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age forever.
Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! 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 Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! 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 Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! 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 Lord be with you. And also Let us pray. Almighty God, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life giving Spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. 
You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching penance, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that anyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, Suddenly, two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified, bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day, rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, 
and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But the word seemed to them to be an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping in and looking, he saw the linen clothes by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, the risen and living one. Amen. Well, good morning. And happy Easter to all of you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. A man by the name of E.E. Cummings stepped out of his house one morning and later wrote, I thank you, God, for most this amazing day, for the leaping greenly spirit of trees, for the true true blue dream of a sky, and for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes. I, who have died, am alive again today, and this is the son's birthday. This is the birthday of life and of love and of wings and of the gay, great, happening, illimitably earth. How should tasting, touching, hearing, seeing, breathing, any lifted from the know of all nothing, merely being human, doubt, unimaginable, you. Now the ears of my ears awake, and the eyes of my eyes open. His neighbor, stepping out of his house, saw just an ordinary day, the neighborhood of modest homes looking much the same, a stray cat, But this man, E.E. Cummings, saw as if by a different light the world being born before his very eyes. Now the ears of my ears awake and the eyes of my eyes open. Most this amazing day. And this is just an ordinary day. Is it not? April 17th, 2022. A little cool this morning, at least early this morning. Bright and sunny. And yet it is not at all an ordinary day. We thank you, God, for most this amazing day. This is the day we begin to see everything by a different light by the light of resurrection, and step out as if from a different doorway. One of my ideas of a perfect day, and I have many of them, but one idea I have for a perfect day is putting on my mask and fins and snorkel gear and diving underwater and swimming for hours in a coral patch to watch this underwater neighborhood 
and look for creatures and life that I have never before or only rarely seen. Oh, a queen angel fish. Oh, a trumpet fish. Oh, a trio of squid. Oh, emerging from the murk, a spotted leopard ray. Oh, oh, a school of tarpon. Oh, peering under a lidge, that is the biggest lobster I have ever seen. But sometimes my husband and I have to go home and consult our books and field guides because we do not recognize or know the name for the life we have just seen. I thank you, God, for most this amazing day when life emerged from the murk and passed before our very eyes. When the women left for the tomb early that morning, they had no hope or expectation of seeing much of anything. They went to anoint the dead body of Jesus, and they certainly did not expect anything to appear from the murk of the grave. But when they got there, the door to the tomb was already open, and when they went inside, they saw that the body was not there. And they heard a voice say, why do you look for the living one among the dead? He is not here. He has been raised and has gone out ahead of you. Then the ears of their ears were awake and the eyes of their eyes were opened. And the women ran to tell the other disciples what they had heard and seen, and what had emerged from the murk of all nothing. He was not there. He has been raised. He is alive and at large in the world. And where shall we look? And where shall we see him? The disciples reacted with scorn. They did not believe them, and why would they? No one has ever seen anyone rise bodily from the grave, and it seemed like all nonsense to them until the time when the living one and Easter came to them. Still, it was a slow dawning. They often did not recognize Jesus, he came and went without warning, and all they had was the evidence that he left behind, a broken loaf, some crumbs on the table, the fire ember still burning on the beach where he had had breakfast with them, their hearts burning, their own selves transfigured and more alive. And we do not really expect to see anyone rise from the grave or understand how it could happen. And secretly, sometimes we may wonder if it's all exaggerated nonsense. Until Easter comes to us and the living one leaves evidence behind that he is alive and at large in the world. A few weeks after her mother died, a woman wrote that she had a dream, that she lived in a house with a barking dog. The barking dog went on and on, barking and barking, and sometimes the dog howled and muttered, and then one day in the dream, the barking stopped. The barking dog was her mother. She had been difficult to love. And in fact, her mother said, 
her husband said that loving her mother was like putting a spoon down a garbage disposal. You had to brace yourself for it. She was a talented woman, but tortured by demons by which she tortured others. And she refused to let her daughter Nora come and take care of her in her last illness until she was in hospice and a nurse intervened and snuck her in the door. That first day she said, I just stood outside or at the foot of the room and the bed and watched. But the next day I went over to the bed and leaned over her. It's Nora, I said, and I swabbed her lips. She looked up and turned her head and looked at me with nearly blind eyes for a long time. And then, then she took her, hand, took her hand and placed it on her heart. It was a gesture of intimacy that she had never managed in her long, darking bog, dog's life. I could hardly believe it was happening. She held my hand against her chest, and I left it there. And under my hand, I felt her old skin thin as paper and her faintly beating heart. And then she picked up her hand and placed it over mine, her palm like the shelter I had longed for all my life. And then she took my hand and held it to her cheek and rubbed it back and forth and up and down, over and over. And we spent the whole afternoon like that, me swabbing her lips, she watching me with her eyes. I held her hand. She was, we were, there is no other word for it, changed. How is it that things fall away? How is it that a new form of life emerges, larger with love than ever before? And all of a sudden, I saw my mother's life as if from a different window. I did not say, she tortured me. I said, she lived a tortured life. And the hours of that afternoon were like a wave moving backwards over time, redeeming the past. And I felt like I understood a part of the resurrection, how Jesus rode a wave backward in time and walked among the dead and woke them up with the power of the same thing that stood with my mother and I that afternoon. That afternoon, whatever we had done or failed to do, the fragments of love were gathered up into something larger and new. And it was a door had opened up into heaven, and we crossed over, my mother leading the way. It was only a fragment of life, indeed just a few hours at the end of a long life, but it was the evidence she had and it was enough. The feel still in her hand of her mother's papery skin and faintly beating heart, her mother's hand over hers, the gestures of their hands, evidence of the obedience of flesh to the power of life that stood in their midst. On that day, in that place, at that grave, the victory of life. Death had no dominion, and all 
was made new and seen by a whole different light. It did happen. And we thank you, God, for most this amazing day. One day in Atlanta, I was checking in with a homeless person, a man by the name of Michael on the streets of Atlanta. I knew him, and I asked him if he had eaten anything the day before on Labor Day, because I knew that Labor Day at that time was a difficult day for people on the streets in Atlanta, because many of the services closed down. And he told me that he had indeed eaten at a place called 910, a place that serves a few hundred people on Labor Day. His eyes wide, he described the large helping of real pinto beans that he had been served, and the great portions of cornbread. This thick, he said, holding his fingers about two inches apart. And I asked if there had been many people there. And he said excitedly, oh, there were thousands, thousands. People came from east and west and north and south. He had tasted in that simple meal poor people, evidence of the heavenly banquet, evidence of the victory of life, tasted that day when all people will gather around one table to feast with abundance, and when death will have no dominion over anyone, rich or poor from anywhere. And where will we look? And where will we see him? Alive and at large in our world. Some years ago, some friends of mine woke up early to a strangely quiet house. Strangely quiet because they had a 15-month-old daughter who usually woke first and woke them by playing in her crib or calling out to them. But the house that morning was quiet, and they ran into her bedroom to see. Her crib was empty. She was not there. They looked all over the house. They went downstairs. They looked in the bathtub. They looked in the dryer. She was not there. They looked in closets to see if she was hiding. She was not there. She was not anywhere in the house. And by now, they were frightened, convinced that she had been kidnapped, although the windows were all shut and the doors had been locked the night before when they went off to bed. And then the telephone rang a neighbor calling to say that their little girl was down the street at the pond in the neighborhood watching the ducks. And they pieced it together later on. She had apparently climbed out of her crib by herself for the very first time while they slept and gone out through that little door that she had seen where the cat went in and out of the house. That was just her size and through which she had gone out into the large and amazing world. There is in any place, at any time, on any morning, in any sealed tight life, a door How? ever small, that is just the right size. And that will lead us out into larger life. I don't know how or when, but there is and will be 
in any sealed tight life, a door that leads to larger love, a door that opens. And Jesus will stand in our midst, the living one, undoing the power of every form of death and giving us new eyes to see by a whole different light and as if from another doorway and leaving evidence behind. Now the ears of our ears are awake. Now the eyes of our eyes are open. And we thank you, God, for most this amazing day as we step out wide and at large we in the world. And we will treasure the evidence that is left behind. Together, we affirm our faith on this Easter morning. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of is risen. He is risen indeed. At this the heavenly choirs of angels rejoice, the earth exults, and Mother Church is glad. Therefore I ask you, who praise the loving kindness of Almighty God, to join in prayer for all of God's people, and for all people everywhere according to their needs. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. Jesus, Lord of life. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry and nourish us all with your word. Jesus, Lord of life. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, 
be with us and all who follow you in the way. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life. Jesus, good shepherd who gave your life for the sheep, recover the straggler, bind up the injured, and strengthen the sick, and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. We remember those on our parish prayer list. Jim, Olivia, Dean, Alex, Lelia, Tammy, Steve, John, Maria, Jennifer, Mark, Jim, Gavin, Van, Evelyn, Mason, Margaret, Ed, Jonathan, Jeff, Amanda, Veronica, Brian, Becky, Haley, Peg, Walt, Ebele, Bob, Judy, Melanie, John, Hugh, Jimmy, and Andrew. The people of Ukraine and all who are refugees. We pray also for those who celebrate birthdays this week. Thomas Ward, Linda Webb, John Lau, Jim Faconis, Chance Pendleton, Martha Montgomery, Maria Morell, and Rebecca Paluzzi. Bless, guide, guide them, them wherever, wherever they, they may be. Strengthen, strengthen them when they stand. Comfort, comfort them, them when discouraged or sorrowful. sorrowful. Raise, Raise them up, up if they fall. fall. And, and in their, their hearts may the peace which, which passes all understanding abide all the days, days of their lives. Their lives. Through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Jesus, Lord of life. Hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life. In your mercy, hear us. Accept our prayers and be with us always. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, that when we meet in his name and pray according to his mind, he will be among us and hear our prayer. In your love and mercy, fulfill our desires and give us your greatest gift, which is to know you, the only true God, and your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of Christ be always with you. When is your birthday? Friday. Friday. Okay.
Well, good morning again, and again, such a joy to be here this morning with all of you and to um, rejoice together. Um, if you are a newcomer here or visiting with us, uh, an especially warm welcome, and I invite you uh, to fill out a newcomer card that you'll find either in the pew in front of you or there's a whole stack of them out in the narthex. And uh, look forward to greeting you after the service and uh, learning more about what brings you here on this grace, great festival day. Um, I have uh, actually more thank yous than announcements this morning, but uh, I'll say just two things. One, um, there will still be a breakfast or, uh, or refreshments, Easter goodies, uh, and fellowship in the Great Hall, and I invite you to wander in there after the service if you, if you would like. And also, although we're at the 10th service, to let you know that next week at the 8 o'clock service, we will be back uh, to worshiping in the chapel. So some of you all may have been awaiting that news. Um, and I want to um, thank, and my words can't really uh, capture uh, how thankful I am, give thanks for our musicians and choir and our altar guild and the flower crew and the folks who hosted uh, breakfast this morning. Um, all those of you who offered your gifts and time so generously throughout this Holy Week and through this Easter morning. God has given us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Let us therefore with gladness offer ourselves, our lives and love and labor to the living God.
with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise to him. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. After supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup, 
We praise you and we bless you. We praise you. We bless you. We give thanks to you. And we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. These are the gifts of God for all the people of God. Alleluia. And this is God's table. Alleluia. And there is a place for anyone from anywhere around this table. Alleluia.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. God, the Father, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow on you the riches of his blessing. God, the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God, the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you this day and remain with you always.
see when the sun's right there and you look down and you're blinded. Nice job. Nice job. Thank you.